Russia, China, and the United States have a new passion project, hypersonic weapons technologies, and they are setting the stage for a race of arms. As the world watches, these three superpowers are in it to win it. Who will emerge as the ultimate superpower? Russia, China, or the US, who will win the hypersonic arms race? On the 6th of March 2018, Michael D. Griffin, the Pentagon's Undersecretary for Research and Engineering, gave a speech that would, with time, change the events of the future. Griffin was labeled a unreconstructed cold warrior, and he wore the label with pride. With five master's degrees and a PhD in aerospace engineering, he was the chief technology officer for President Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative. I'm sorry for everybody out there who champions some other high priority, some technical thing. It's not that I disagree with those, he told the room, but there has to be a first, and hypersonics is my first. What Griffin was talking about was a new type of weapon, something that could completely revolutionize the world as we knew it. And today, these weapons are being developed not only by the USA, but also by China, Russia, and North Korea, and other countries. What are hypersonic missiles? Hypersonic missiles can maneuver and strike any target within minutes, and can travel at more than 15 times the speed of sound. They can reach their targets in a flash, much before anybody can be warned. An object moving through the air produces an audible shockwave, or a sonic boom, when it reaches about 760 miles per hour. This speed of sound is called Mach 1, after Austrian physicist Ernst Mach. When a projectile flies faster than Mach 1, it is said to travel at a supersonic speed, a speed faster than sound. When a projectile travels at a speed faster than Mach 5, it is said to travel at hypersonic speed. There are two categories of hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic glide vehicles are launched on booster rockets before they detach from the booster and glide towards the target at terminal velocity with an anti-radar maneuver. The second is hypersonic cruise missiles, which use oxygen for propulsion and are powered by powerful air-breathing engines or scramjets activated at high speeds. Both types of missiles travel at least five times faster than sound, but almost all ballistic missiles do that. Then what makes the hypersonic missiles unique? Hypersonic weapons are highly maneuverable, can fly at relatively low altitudes, and have such high speed that regular anti-missiles cannot compete. This makes it difficult to detect and destroy them. At hypersonic speeds, the air resistance and friction generate a lot of heat, which needs to be managed through tough but lightweight heat shields and thermal protection systems for the arms. The sensors and electronics also need to be able to withstand extreme conditions. China, Russia, and hypersonic missiles. As the war between Russia and Ukraine continues, it's been reported that Russia used a hypersonic missile in an attack on Ukraine. If confirmed, this would be the first time that an ultra-high-speed maneuvering weapon has been used in combat. It follows China's testing of its hypersonic weapon last June. The US confirmed that last year China conducted a few tests of hypersonic weapon systems to advance in space and military technologies. The Chinese military launched a rocket into space twice, the first time, it missed its target by about 24 miles, but one of the hypersonic glide weapons reportedly flew through low-orbit space and circled the planet before plunging into the South China Sea. The system fired a missile as it approached its target while traveling at Mach 5. This globe-spanning hypersonic glider has demonstrated some advanced capabilities. The launch of this hypersonic missile surprised many, including Pentagon's top general Mark Milley, who said that it was quite a Stupnik moment. He was referring to the Soviet Union's launch of the world's first ever satellite Sputnik in 1957, which ignited the superpower's race to space. While a lot of US leaders were stunned by China's progress, China quickly denied the reports, insisting that it was just a testing of a reusable spacecraft. Additionally, the Aviation Industry Corp of China, or the AVIC, had earlier confirmed that a Mach 8 wind tunnel called FL-64 had been completed and now had testing capability, including weapon separation and delivery. China also claims to have developed artificial intelligence that can predict the course of a hypersonic missile as well as an infrared homing technology that it thinks the US will not have until at least 2025. China seems to be quite ahead when it comes to the development of hypersonic weapons. 
The weapons have a level of technological sophistication that worries the US officials. However, it might be less fearsome than it appears, because its sophistication might actually hold it back. Chinese scientists are also reportedly building the JF-22 wind tunnel, which can simulate flight at 30 times the speed of sound, state broadcaster CCTV reported last year. On the 29th of May 2022, Russia announced the successful test fire of the hypersonic missile Zircon, which is the latest addition to Russia's weaponry in the race against the US and China. Initial tests indicated that the Zircon had a maximum range of up to 500 kilometers. However, the latest developments saw it strike a target nearly 1,000 kilometers away in the White Sea. The Zircon is reportedly capable of flying nine times the speed of sound, which is 2.7 to 3.2 kilometers per second. The Russian military had said that it had fired the Zircon missile from the Admiral Gorshkov warship and hit a test target in the Arctic waters of Russia. In December of 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that the Kremlin had tested the new avant-garde hypersonic rocket. The test was completed successfully, Putin said. All technical parameters were verified. Now, what is avant-garde? Avant-garde is a hypersonic glide vehicle. It boosts into the upper atmosphere from a rocket, then detaches and glides towards its target. It can also maneuver as it reaches its target. The Kremlin had announced that it would fit avant-garde with an atomic warhead and deploy it alongside old-styled intercontinental ballistic missiles starting in 2019. It is unclear, though, how potent the Russian weaponry is. The Kinzhal missiles used in Ukraine aren't technically hypersonics. They are air-launched ballistic missiles, most likely modified from Russia's Iskander missile. Military experts are also doubtful of the progress that Russia claims to have made regarding other hypersonic weapons. Around the time of the results of the avant-garde test, a photo went online of a Chinese warship sailing in the ocean armed with an electromagnetic railgun that could be capable of firing shells at hypersonic velocity. While conventional guns use explosive powder to charge, a railgun propels its projectiles by magnetic force. The railgun first appeared in January of 2018 in a photo of the Chinese Navy landing vessel Yangshan at a facility in Wuhan on the Yangtze River. A large cannon could be seen on the forward deck of the ship. China confirmed in March that the cannon was indeed an experimental railgun. The photo also seemed to confirm that the gun had undergone at-sea tests, which would make it the first weapon to do so. Meanwhile, the war against Ukraine didn't go exactly according to what Russia had planned. As the initial objectives failed, everybody is fearful that Putin might increase the use of its hypersonic and long-range missiles. The Reduga KH-101 was quite successful during Russia's intervention in the Syrian civil war, and it became the army's flagship long-range cruise missile. However, it is being used in far greater numbers in the war Russia is currently waging on Ukraine, with an apparent failure rate that, if correct, will be of significant concern to Moscow. International Institute for Strategic Studies Senior Fellow for Military Aerospace Douglas Barry writes in an IISS blog post. In the guise of the Reduga KH-102, RSAS-23B Kodiak, the missile is also the Russian Air Force's main air-launched nuclear-armed cruise missile. During a 21st March 2022 U.S. Department of Defense briefing, an official noted that Russia still possessed more than half of its air-launched cruise missiles. However, it has already been used by many, and many among them have failed. The official said, Either they are failing to launch, or they are failing to hit the target, or they are failing to explode on contact. Is the USA lagging behind? The US has been quite slow in the development of hypersonics in recent years. The Air Force has struggled with its air launch glider, while the Army and Navy won't be deploying their gliders before 2024 and 2025. Russian systems like the Reduga KH-101, RSAS-23A Kodiak, air-launched cruise missiles, and avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicles are already entering service, but the U.S. does not yet have an equivalent. In mid-March, the U.S. was successful in testing a hypersonic missile. The country kept it a secret for two weeks due to the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and to avoid escalating tensions with Russia. The Lockheed Martin version of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept was launched from a Boeing B-52 strategic bomber. The missile maintained a speed of at least Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound. 
It flew 65,000 feet above and traveled for more than 300 miles. The Air Force's Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, or ARRW, is a hypersonic boost glider. The US also conducted two successful tests of scramjet powered cruise missiles in September of 2021 and March of 2022. While both Russia and China claim to have hypersonic boost glide missiles, no nation has developed a scramjet powered cruise missile for service yet. This was the first successful test of the ARRW after three consecutive failures in testing in 2021. Soon after the testing, the US, the UK, and Australia announced a partnership called AUKUS, which will provide Australia with nuclear powered submarines in the Indo Pacific region. It's mainly to keep an eye on the Chinese Navy, which is becoming an increasing threat. Following the news that Russia fired hypersonic missiles at Ukraine, AUKUS decided to not only develop the missiles, but also find a way to stop them. We are committed today to commence new trilateral cooperation on hypersonics and counter-hypersonics and electronic warfare capabilities, as well as to expand information sharing and to deepen cooperation on defense innovation," said US President Joe Biden, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison in a joint statement. We reaffirmed our commitment to AUKUS and a free and open Indo-Pacific. In light of Russia's unprovoked, unjustified, and unlawful invasion of Ukraine, we reiterated our unwavering commitment to an international system that respects human rights, the rule of law, and the peaceful resolution of disputes free from coercion. Hypersonic weapons are so fast, so maneuverable, that modern defenses can't stop them, said Dr. Alex Craig, an assistant professor of aerospace and mechanical engineering at the University of Arizona. Russia and China especially have been working in this field. Honestly, they are probably ahead of us right now. The university's Boundary Layer Stability and Transition Laboratory features a hypersonic wind tunnel capable of testing air speeds of up to Mach 5, five times the speed of sound or about 3,800 miles per hour. Such wind tunnels help researchers study the effects of hypersonic speeds. According to Craig, the US started decommissioning wind tunnels and other ground testing infrastructure after the Cold War, whereas countries like China kept on building. That is why China has made a certain level of progress that the US has apparently not been able to match. He also believes that Russia hasn't revealed everything they have yet and that they surely have something more formidable in store. However, the Pentagon needs to analyze how hypersonics can help meet its goals, and the goal shouldn't be to match or keep behind China or Russia. The Pentagon also needs to improve its defenses against hypersonics by strengthening theater defenses to protect potential targets such as aircraft carriers and command centers. According to Aaron Stain, director of research at the Foreign Policy Institute in Philadelphia, while all the major nuclear players are developing hypersonic systems, their end goal is different. And these different points of view feed into others' paranoia, leading to an aggressive race for arms. Both Russia and China have hypersonic arms in service, but their weapons are nuclear and intended to serve as deterrents, which means that these weapons would only need to be used in a near-peer conflict. Russia's avant-garde has a 2 megaton nuclear warhead, so until a nuclear war that threatens to end the world actually begins, they don't need to prove that their weapon functions correctly. In the same way, China's DFZF was designed to sink American aircraft carriers, another situation which hopefully doesn't materialize. On the other hand, the US is committed to developing only conventionally armed non-nuclear hypersonic missiles. This means that they can be used immediately after being put into service for all kinds of conflict. As these weapons carry conventional warheads rather than nuclear ones, it also creates a challenge when it comes to the target. According to the Congressional Research Service, a nuclear weapon can be up to 100 times less accurate than a conventionally armed one. This is due to the size of its blast radius. You can afford to miss the exact target with a nuclear missile because it creates such a huge explosion that the target gets covered anyway. Conventional missiles, on the other hand, would need to be extremely precise. Comparing who's ahead and who isn't is not a very useful framework, because the countries have different endpoints, said Singapore-based defense analyst Zoe Stanley Lockman, formerly with the European Union Institute for Security Studies. Beijing and Moscow look at hypersonics to ensure that they can defeat all missile defenses. 
The U.S. plans to use them to strike hard targets, such as things that support nuclear command and control. Ankit Panda of the Carniège Endowment for International Peace notes that the most valuable thing that the U.S. could do to slow down this race for arms is to discuss the limitations on strategic missile defenses, just like it did during the Cold War. Putting missile defense on the table would allow Washington to extract meaningful concessions from Russia and China. It would additionally dissuade each from pursuing costly, convoluted, and dangerous means to deliver nuclear weapons. Where do the other countries stand with regards to hypersonic arms? The top spot in the hypersonic missile race is claimed by Russia and China. Russia has been intensely developing hypersonics in recent years. Putin believes that this will give Russia an edge over the US. India, in collaboration with Russia, is developing the BrahMos-2, which underwent testing last September. Japan is also working on a hypersonic missile that is specifically intended for anti-ship purposes. Several other countries, including France and Australia, have programs to develop hypersonic weapons. If all of these countries are getting on board with hypersonic arms, North Korea won't be far behind. These weapons are a step further than the ballistic missiles that Pyongyang have tested over the years. If North Korea fully realizes this, it could be a real contender in the race of arms. Victor Cha, a senior vice president and Korea chair at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, points out that North Korea's capabilities have been repeatedly underestimated in the past. They will test something. It won't work and the experts will say, oh, you know, they're trying to achieve some capability, but they're still a long way off, he says. Then they do it. North Korea is very clear about its intentions, he cautions. It wants to develop hypersonic capabilities, and it will develop hypersonic capabilities. What does this mean for the future? Russia has shown the world the effectiveness and devastation of hypersonic missiles, but just one kind of weapon won't lead any country to victory. In the future, we might also be looking at cyber warfare. Cyber attacks can cause exponential damage by breaking or completely damaging confidential systems. Indian Air Force Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Shadara in April told Economic Times, The spectrum of conflict will be spread across all domains, spanning from conventional to subconventional, kinetic to non-kinetic, and lethal to non-lethal, all under a nuclear overhang. Weapons could range from computer malware to hypersonic missiles, and armies need to develop capabilities that can withstand the full spectrum of conflict. The development of hypersonics is moving too fast, though. There hasn't been any actual discussion about how these weapons could be deadly and how they could disrupt any efforts to avoid conflict. There are no international agreements on the use of hypersonic missiles, nor are there any plans for such discussions in place. Instead, every country is just rushing to possess these weapons and is in the midst of a new arms race. Experts worry that this could renew the tensions from the Cold War era. With such fast weapons, there will be no time left for the military officials and political leaders to think and figure out the nature of the attack, which means that the opposing army will not be able to make any rational decisions and it can pressure the countries to strike first. This could have devastating effects on the world. Previously, the creation of chemical and biological weapons and ballistic missiles with multiple nuclear warheads caused international debates and eventually, superpower treaty negotiations were made and the issue was brought under control. But that is not the case with hypersonic technology and there is nothing in place that could stop the use of such weapons. With almost every country gradually pursuing this new weaponry, it will no doubt have cascading effects in the future. One of them might win the hypersonic arms race, but no matter who wins, we all stand to lose as a race. Who do you think will win the hypersonic arms race? USA, China, or Russia? Or will it be some other country? Let us know your opinions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.